what we're going to do is take a look at this diagram. And we have two vectors labeled on the board, and the problem is very simple. I want to calculate the cross product A crossed with D. Of course, I've already mislabeled something. I'm sorry about that. So this is actually not vector D or vector uh, B. This is vector D. Sorry about that. So we're taking the cross product A cross D. And then uh, after we do that, we're going to take the cross product D cross A. So we're just going to we're going to cross product them in opposite directions, opposite order, and see what we get. But we're also going to solve it two ways. We're going to solve it first using kind of the easiest way based on what we're given in the problem statement. And then we're going to do it using the determinant way, and we're going to verify that the two answers are the same. Because you need to have that confidence when you're on an exam. You don't have time to think about. Uh, okay, which way should I do it? Are they the same? Because you, it's all about confidence. You have to know that whatever you're given, if you use whatever the information that you have to calculate it, you have confidence doing it in whatever path you take is going to give you the correct answer. The only way you get that confidence is to actually do it both ways a couple of times. So we have two vectors on the board, and we're actually given uh, for vector A, the length of this vector is 8 meters. That's what the 8 is. This could be a displacement vector. And we're given the length of the D vector, which is 10 meters. And we're actually indirectly given the angles here. So we're given the length of the vectors, the magnitudes, and we're also given their angles. So because we're given that information in the outset of the problem, it's going to be easier to find the cross product with A times B or, the, or A times D, magnitude of A, magnitude of D times the sine of the angle theta between them, and then just use the right hand rule to figure out uh, what direction it goes because these are in the XY plane. But then we're going to do the problem again where we solve it uh, the other way just to verify that it's correct. All right, so let's start to work on that down here. Let's take a look at vector A, right? So what we're going to write down here is I'm going to write down the magnitude of vector A. What is the magnitude of vector A? It's given in the problem as this diagram is part of the given information to you. And so the magnitude of A means the length of the vector is given as 8. So I can put the meters there, but I'm just going to put the number there. The magnitude is 8. And what is the angle theta of this vector relative to the x-axis? Well, if this is the x-axis and we always have positive angles going this way, then this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees. And since the vector is purely on the y-axis down there, the negative y-axis, this is 270 degrees. You want to write your angles to measure the position of that vector measured positive from the x-axis, just like we do in, in trigonometry. And so, of course, it's bigger than 180 degrees. It's 270, but that's okay. It specifies the length and the direction of this vector as being down here. This is the, a good description of where that vector points in space. Now, let's do the exact same thing for vector b. Vector b, not vector b, I keep saying b. I'm sorry about that. It's vector d on the board here. What is the magnitude of vector d? Well, it's given to us in the problem. In the diagram, it's actually a little longer. It's 10 meters, so I'll just put 10 right here. And what is this angle? The angle that I'm looking for is relative to the x-axis, but what's given to me in the diagram is an angle of 53 degrees, but that's relative to the positive y-axis. So a lot of students, when you're uncomfortable with what you're doing, when you're not yet confident in yourself, then you just look at what the diagram has and you just use it because, hey, they gave it to me. And so I'm going to use 53 degrees. That's the direction of the D, the D vector. But I'm trying to tell you over and over again that you want to measure the positions of these vectors always relative to the same place, the positive x-axis. You see, this 53 degrees is a red herring. It's, it's useful and it, and it is important. It does help us solve the problem, but it's not the angle that you use in this calculation because of the way the, uh, uh, I mean, you, you could, I guess I should say, there are different ways to do it. Okay, of course you could use it, but what I'm going to tell you to do is what I want you to write down is the position of these uh, vectors and their angles relative to the x-axis. I'll show you a different way in a second. But for now, know that if this is 0 and this is 90, then we just add 53 degrees more. So what you have to do is take 90 and you add uh, 53. So this angle that we're looking for, 90 plus 53 is actually 143 degrees. And then both of these vectors are measured relative to the same, relative from the same point, which is this positive x-axis. All right, so then if we want to figure out what this cross product is, what we'll do is we'll say vector A crossed with vector D. Then it's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of D times the sine of the angle between them, right? And so what is the magnitude of A? Well, the magnitude of A we wrote down, it's 8. What is the magnitude of vector D? We wrote it down as 10. 
and that's the sign of the angle. What angle do you use? Again, if you don't know what you're doing, then you say, well, is it this one or is it this one? No, it's, it's the angle between them. What, and when we say the angle between them, you want to, for the cross product, use the smallest angle between them. Here's the two vectors. Here is the included interior angle. You don't want to use this angle. This is the bigger angle bigger than 180 degrees, you always use for the cross product the angle between the vectors being the smallest of the, the smaller of the two angles, so this angle here. But if you know, which we do know, that this angle right here is 143 degrees, and you know that this one all the way around is 270 degrees, then what would be the angle between them? Well, you just take the 270, which is this angle, and you subtract off this one. You just kind of cut that out. What's going to be left is this angle right here. So we're going to take the sign of the difference, 270 minus 143. You'd be surprised how many students try to memorize stuff like this. They try to say, well, I'll just take the, uh, the, the subtract the two angles and I'll just memorize it. But they don't know why they're doing it, right? It's because you're trying to find the angle between the vectors. So if you know this one relative to the x-axis and you know this one relative to the x-axis, by subtracting them, you're left with this angle here, which is what you want. So what you're going to have is you're going to have over here uh, 8 times 10 is 80, right? When you subtract these numbers, you'll have the sine of 127 degrees. And this is the angle between them that we're going to end up using. So what we're going to have is 80. And then when you take 127 degrees and take the sine of this, you get 0 0.799. And this is rounded, of course. The decimals go on forever. So vector A cross with vector D, right? When you take 80 times 0 0.799, what do you get? You get 63.89. Now be careful. When you find A times B times the sine of the angle theta between them, what you're really calculating is the length of the cross product vector that comes out. The direction is given by the right hand rule. So even though in the books and stuff we, we usually write it like this, a, b sine theta, really what you're finding is the length of this vector. The absolute value means the length of that vector. The length of the vector is really 63.89. We don't know yet what direction it's pointed in. All right? We, for that, have to look at the right hand rule. We're taking a cross d. So if I take my hand and I, uh, and I know that the positive z axis comes out of the board because x cross y gives me z. If I cut into A first, A cross D, curling it like this, my thumb is pointing into the board. Again, A crossing into D, my thumb is going into the board. This is the positive Z direction. Into the board is the negative Z direction. So really, it's the negative K direction. <clears throat> so whereas the magnitude of this vector was this, what we really want to write down is the vector A cross with the vector D is actually negative 63.89 in the k hat direction. So I manually insert k hat here because I know which direction it is and I manually put the negative in there because when I take a cross d it points in the negative z direction so I have to add both of these things. This is a full blown vector, right? This is why I take the absolute value bars off of it because this is an actual vector. It's a number with a direction, the direction of the unit vector k there. And because it's negative, it means it points in the negative k direction or the, the negative z direction into the board, okay? So it's a two-part process. When you do a, b, sine, theta, that just gives you the length, but then you have to associate a direction with that, okay? Notice if you do take the absolute value of this and take the, the length of it, how long is it? Well, it's 63.89 units long. So this is what we wrote down. Now, the next thing we wanna do for part B is we want to go in the reverse direction. Instead of A cross D, let's now find A, whoops, let's find D cross A. Now we would typically go through the same exact situation. Again, if you do D cross A, what are you going to do? You're going to say, uh, okay, well, it's a magnitude of D vector, right? Magnitude multiplied by the magnitude of the A vector times the sine of the angle between them. But then when you start really doing it, you realize that the, the number, the calculation that you get is exactly what you already did. Because A is here, you're just flipping the direction, and D is here, you're just uh, multiplying in reverse order. Of course, when we multiply numbers, you can do it in any order you want. You know, 5 times 3 is 15, and 3 times 5 is also 15. So that's the same. And the sign of the angle between them, the angle between the vectors is still 127 degrees. So if you put all this stuff in place, you're going to get exactly the same calculation. You're still going to get 63.89. So the length of it is still 63.89 d cross a. 
And you say, well, wait a minute, how can I get the same answer? And you say, well, this is just the length of the vector. Now I have to actually figure out its direction. So D cross A, I go back to the board. Now I'm doing it where I cut into D first. Uh, see, if I, if I do it, uh, and I need to go where I, I, I always sweep through the smaller of the two angles. That's the other part. You see, there's two angles here. You, you could convince yourself D cross A is like this, but that's not right because you have to cut into the smaller of the two angles. The, this is an angle between the two vectors, but the smaller of the two angles is the angle between the two vectors that we're interested in for the cross product. So when you do D cross A, you need to cut into D first through the smaller angle into A and your thumb comes out of the board, which is in the positive Z direction, the positive Z direction. So then now that you have this, this is the absolute value giving you this, the actual D vector crossed with the actual A vector is 63.89 in the positive Z direction. So I just put a K hat here. This is the answer for this one. And notice that it's exactly the opposite of this one. Isn't that familiar? We talked about that before. We said in the first lesson, I said that when you, when you take two vectors, A and B, let's call it, in this case, it's A and D. If you do A cross D, and then you go in the reverse order and do D cross A, you're gonna get exactly the same vector, except they're gonna be pointed in opposite directions. If, one ve if the cross product pointed this way, curling it or crossing it the other way points the other direction from it, 180 uh, degrees. And that is reflected by the minus sign between them. One is pointed in the positive K direction and the other one is pointed in the negative K direction. That's true of any cross product. When you cross it in the reverse order, you get the same magnitude, AB sine theta is the same, uh, but the direction, see the magnitudes were the same here because AB sine theta is the same, but the direction is different because whenever you cross product two different ways, your thumb points two different ways, okay? And the same, uh, answer will be reflected if you calculate this cross product using any other method. We're doing it this way and we're verifying that it makes sense and it does make sense, but no matter how you calculate it, when you cross two vectors in a reverse order of each other, you always get the same thing with a negative sign. And I mentioned that in the first lesson. So what I'd like to do is, uh, since we've calculated this this way, Let's take the same information given to us and let's calculate the cross product using the other method that we know. And that method is to take the determinant of that matrix. But in order to use that method, we have to know the, the vectors A and D. We have to write them down in unit vector notation, I, J, and K. And notice that we don't have that. I mean, the diagram is given to us with the direction and the angles and the lengths, but we don't have I, J, K notation. We have to convert from what we have to that once we do that conversion and have it in the proper form, when we calculate the cross product there, we're gonna get the same answers. And I wanna prove it to you so you get comfortable moving back and forth between these two ways of doing things. So let's move to the other board and do that. And <clears throat> what we need to first do is we need to write down the vector A and the vector D. Let's take the easiest way, the easiest vector first, vector A, right? What is vector A? If you just look at the diagram, it's eight units long and it's pointed purely in the negative y axis. So if you look at the coordinates of the tip of this vector, it's zero i because there's no x component at all and it's negative eight j because j is the y direction, negative means it's pointed down here. So if you were to write it, you would say it's zero in the i direction minus eight in the j direction, but we don't usually write zero i, so we just basically say it's a negative eight in the j direction. So you notice we didn't have to do much of a calculation because this one was strictly on the axis, we know the tip of this vector is at zero comma negative eight. That's the tip of the vector. So it's zero i negative eight j and we just throw away the zero i, and the, this vector is written as negative eight j. Now, how do we do the same thing for the d vector, right, the d vector? So here's where we have to earn our money, so to speak, because what we have is we know the tip of this vector is over here. What we really want is the x and y components of this tip of this vector. That This is gonna be the i component is gonna be negative, and the j component is gonna be positive. Once we know the x and y components. Now we know that this is 143 degrees uh, from here to here, so the cosine of this angle will project down here, and the sine of this angle will project over here. And we're gonna use 143 degrees. We're not gonna use the 53, because that, that is a different angle and you have to tilt your head and make a different triangle. But for this one, if I know the angle is measured to the positive x-axis, 
cosine of this angle projects here, which will be negative, and the sine of that angle will project there, which is positive, and we have to multiply by the magnitude of 10 to scale it to give me the proper components. So what I'm really gonna have over here is I'm gonna have 10 times the cosine of the angle 143, and this is in the i direction, and then I'm gonna add to that 10 times the sine of 143, and that is in the j direction. I really need you to study that and make sure that you're on board with that before we go any further, right? Um, you know, you can think of you know, a smaller angle if you want. If you, if you know the length of, a, of this and you know the included angle, then it's the magnitude times the cosine projects down here. Magnitude times the sine projects over here. It doesn't matter that the angle is bigger. If you take the cosine and the sine of this and multiply by the length of it, then you're gonna get the x and the y projections. And we just take the x component and put it in front of the i hat and put the y component and put it in front of the j hat, right? So let's move right along. When you take cosine of 143 and multiply by 10, you're actually gonna get negative 7.99, and that is in front of the i hat direction. When you take 143, take the sine and multiply by 10, you're gonna get 6.02, and that's in the j direction. Now notice, I'm taking these cosines and sines and I'm rounding to two digits. So, you know, the more digits you carry, the more accurate your result. I'm actually truncating the two digits. So if I was like trying to like save someone's life, I would carry a lot more digits. So this is not gonna be super accurate, but it's gonna be enough to verify that I'm getting the same answer as what I was getting before uh, here. And notice that when I took the cosine times 10, this gave me a negative number because the cosine of this angle projected onto the negative x axis, whereas the sine over here projects to the positive y axis. So the trig takes care of getting the proper signs here. And now I have the a vector in unit vector notation and the d vector also in unit vector notation. So I am ready to, to rock and roll and now write down a crossed with d. And that's gonna be equal to the determinant of this big matrix, which is i, then j, then k. And for the a vector, it was zero for i and negative eight for j and zero for k. And for d vector, it was negative 7.99 for i and 6.02 for j and zero for k. There's no k component here. So there's my matrix. All I gotta do is take the, the uh, determinant of that and then hopefully it all works out. So let's do that. So I'm gonna work on the i component first. When I mark through this column and this row, I only have these numbers left. It's criss cross, but you can see it's negative eight times zero so negative eight times zero minus zero times 6.02. So I'm just gonna get zero right here. So it's criss cross multiplied times zero times zero, right? And then for the J component, I have to manually insert that minus sign in front of J as I always do. I mentally cross out this and this and I'm left with these four numbers, criss cross. So what I have is zero, uh, zero times zero minus zero times this zero times negative 7.99. Again, what I get essentially in there is zero. And I'm just gonna go down below here and put plus K direction. Since I kind of ran out of room, I'm gonna cover this up, I'm gonna cover this up, and I have these four numbers, criss cross. So it's gonna be zero times uh, 6.02 minus, and then negative eight and negative 7.99, negative eight, negative 7.99, close, close parentheses. Now let me stop before I do anything else and make sure I, I believe I have the correct situation with all the negative signs. See, there is some, some opportunity for error here, all right? But let's before we even calculate, let's just do this one more time. We cross this out and it's gonna be this times this minus this times this, that's this. Then minus J, we cross this out. Zero times zero minus z this times this, there's that. Then we cover this up and it's, this times this right here, minus this times this, the minus sign here, this times this. So I think that's right. So what we're gonna get at the end of the day is this is zero. Then we have J, zero. And then we have K. And inside of here, this is zero. But then we have eight times 7.99. Um, but then we have negative times negative, that's positive, then times this, which is negative again. So it's negative 63.92. So this triple negative gives me a negative answer. Eight times eight is 64, so it's almost 64, it's 63.92. So then you write A crossed with D. 
right? And this is zero, this is zero. We have a negative 63.92 in the k direction. So we wrote the a vector as a unit vector notation. We wrote the d vector in unit vector notation. We cross product both of those. And without any right hand rule or figuring anything out, the, the direction is all taken care of and it should be this negative 63.92 in the k direction. What did we get over here? A cross d. For a cross d vector, we got negative 63.89. So we got negative 63.89 in the k direction. We got negative 63.92 in the k direction. What do you think the difference is? The difference is just carrying decimals when I calculate this. Because when I found the components of the d vector and I took the cosine and the sine, I truncated, I truncated uh, those decimals there. So the more decimals you carry, then the more accurate it will be. And then uh, I also did the same thing over here. Whenever I took the sine of 127 degrees, I wrote down 0.799. If I would carry more decimals here, then it would get a more accurate result here as well. So in both calculations, I'm truncating decimals. So at this point, you're just doing it as a double check. 63 point, uh, negative 63.92 in the k direction is close enough to negative 63.89. I mean, it's very, very close to say that these two things gave me the same thing. Now, even though I know that we know the result, uh, I want to do the whole thing again. Instead of a cross d, let's do d cross a. So, uh, do I want to do it? You know what? I think I'm going to do it on the same board, actually. I think I'm going to do it on the same board. So, let's go ahead and do this here. So, let's do d cross a. And that's going to be equal to the determinant of the matrix. Here's i. Here's j, here's, let me space out a little bit, k. And d comes first now because it's d cross a. So d was negative 7.99, and then 6.02, and then 0, and then a is 0, and then negative 8, and then 0. So I'm going to erase this, I'm going to make this line longer. So you see what's happening, this matrix is the same. I've just flipped these rows around. Take this one, put it down below, and then that's the only difference. Now I have to take the determinant of this guy. So let's do the exact same thing. It's a good exercise. In the i direction, what do we have? We cross this out, we cross this out. It's crisscross. Now this, I think I can skip a little step here. This times this is zero, this times this is zero. So really I have zero minus zero in here. This comes from this one multiplied, this is this one multiplied, and they're subtracted. So it's zero minus zero in there. Now for the j, I have to insert my own negative sign right here. Cross this out, cross this out. I have these numbers. This is giving me zero minus this, which is giving me zero. So again, I can write zero minus zero in there after I crisscross multiply. And then for the k direction, here I have to actually work a little bit. Crisscross is going to be negative 7.99 multiplied by negative 8, and then minus. So this is multiplied minus this, which is just giving me 0. I can just put the 0 right there, like that. So here I have a, a 0 for i and 0 for j, so I'm not even going to write them down. What do I have for k? For the k direction, I have this is negative times negative is positive, and I have 7.99 uh, times uh, uh, 7.99 times 8, and so you're going to get 63.92. So you have negative times negative is positive, and this doesn't do anything over here. And so we have D crossing with A to give 63.92 in the K direction. And this is what we're writing down over here. So notice we get exactly the same thing, 63.92, but in the opposite direction. So you can, you can definitely tell that it's because of rounding numbers. Because when I rounded the numbers here, I get exactly the same value, but just flip the direction, which is what I expect when I take the cross product in reverse order. Uh, and the exact same thing was happening here, it's just the number is slightly different. So I think I verified with a practical problem that when you're given two vectors and asked to take their cross product, just use the method that's easier for you with what you have been given. If you are given the vectors on the board and you know the magnitudes and the angles, and it's in the xy plane, so it's real easy just to do a cross product and figure out if it's plus z or minus z, then it's going to be faster to just do a, b sine theta and then figure out the direction, plus z, minus z, go from there. But if the vectors are instead given to you in unit vector notation, or if they're three-dimensional vectors pointed random ways, in which case you're using the right-hand rules hard, then just forget about that. Don't even try to use that and put them into a matrix and take their determinant. 
and for each component, you cross it out, you take the little sub determinants, and then you just, it's just a little bit of work. I mean, yes, I had to teach it to you. Yes, it's something you probably didn't know before, but I'm telling you that if you do it other methods, then it's just more cumbersome, you know, and I've showed you that in the last lesson. So I'd like you to practice this. I would like you to do it both ways. Do it the first way, then do it the second way. Only by practicing will you figure out the confidence that you need to excel. So do that. Follow me on to the next lesson, which will be our last lesson in this class. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.